Minister Jolie's trip is important. To, you know, it, it has multiple audiences, obviously uh, most important for Canadians to see that Canada stands, you know, literally stands with Ukraine in Ukraine, along with all the European and American allies that are there at the same time. For Ukrainians in, in Ukraine, it's important to see that, that uh, their allies and partners are there to stand with them and, and for the Russian media to report uh, that, yeah, indeed, Ukraine has international support. Right now, uh, Canada has a training mission in Ukraine. You know, they're training people to NATO standards, interoperability. There hasn't been any discussion of, of any, uh, you know, kind of military force from Canada beyond that or from any other ally. It's This is about helping Ukraine defend itself, giving them the the things that they need to protect and defend their borders for when Russian tanks roll over them. So specifically, we know that Canada has expertise with, uh, you know, surveillance systems for our land and sea borders. That's something Ukraine is in desperate need of, uh, especially as, as Russia continues to build up troops. And as we saw the United Kingdom do, uh, there are there are weapons, uh, specifically the United Kingdom sent anti-tank missiles. Those are intended for Ukraine to, to you know, use if Russian tanks roll over its border. Putin wants uh, control of Ukraine politically, economically, militarily. Uh, since 2014, uh, when uh, President Yanukovych, ex-President Yanukovych fled Ukraine, uh, Putin has tried everything he can to regain uh, Ukraine and other uh, ex-Soviet republics as part of the Russian sphere of influence. Based on what we saw last week with Russia making outrageous demands about, you know, kicking Poland and other countries out of NATO back to, to the 1997 boundaries, I don't think Russia was engaged in diplomacy uh, in a serious way that was looking to resolve this crisis. This latest crisis, as the NATO Secretary General has said, is entirely based on the fact that Russia has 100,000 plus troops on Ukraine's borders. And the only de-escalation de that is possible is the Russian military going back to its barracks. It should be taken very seriously because uh, they are a large army and they have uh, every intention of using this armed army uh, to, to invade Ukraine further and again. And while we, you know, we're happy to see that there's diplomatic efforts, I don't see the Russian side engaging in a real way. Uh, they're making outrageous demands, which they surely know will not be achievable. Our issue is helping Ukraine be as prepared as possible, raising the the level of risk for Russia to do an invasion. Uh, if the Russian side knows that, uh, you know, the Ukrainians have American, British. Canadian surveillance and weapon systems, we think that their calculation on an invasion will change.